basically it's the overhang from GBTC. So there's a lot of activity, a lot of repositioning, net flows have been offset really by GBTC as people are unwinding the arbitrage and stuff like that. So I don't think you need to read much into it. It probably has to digest. Don't forget you brought, brought forward a lot of demand. Net net, what will have we brought forward? Two, three billion dollars of demand. Okay, so that takes time to for the market to digest. And then you've got to think through who the RAAs are, who these people are. And if you put them in your head, these are not New York dealing rooms who are getting on the phone and saying, buy this now. Raul Powell started Real Vision and is its CEO. Since 2013, when he got his first Bitcoin, he has worked with digital goods. Powell is very optimistic about many assets, just like many other people in this field. This is especially true now that the bull market is well underway. The most well-known cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, has been talked about a lot lately. In June, a company called Black asked the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to allow a spot Bitcoin exchange-traded fund to begin doing business. This made a lot of people happy. The SEC gave its okay after some time. Some people think Bitcoin will go up a lot in the next few months, even though its price has been going down lately. Beyond Pal doesn't have a lot of money in Bitcoin, but he thinks the most popular cryptocurrency is a great idea. My friend also thinks well of other coins. He thinks that people who buy any of them now could make a lot of money in the next two years. The ex-Goldman Sachs executive has been very positive about the future of Solana. He learned how to do that fire dancer, and the Solana blockchain chain now has a new validator client. Solana's network only has one validator client right now. It was made by Solana Labs. Some people think Fire Dancer will finally fix Solana's network issues. When Solana's advent validation client is used, it should make the network faster and safer by making it less likely that software mistakes will happen. Powell believes that Solana's worth could increase by almost 50 times before the market goes down. Besides NFTs, he is also positive about a lot of other cryptocurrencies and digital assets. Here are some clips from the most recent talk that Raul Pal had with Anthony Pompano. In them, he talks about what he thinks about Ethereum, Solana, and XRP. Like and share this movie. Sign up for the group and set up alerts. To see more movies, click the bell. It's great if you can do anything to help the show and YouTube grow. Enjoy making the movie. There are people who are wearing slacks, who read Barron's on the weekend, read about the ETF, aren't sure, go on the golf course, see their best client, he asked them a question. The whole process is slow. You know, they got to go and have steak dinners and all of that stuff. So the whole process of bringing people in is going to take a while longer, but it's there now. You know, I just think of the CTF as a, a trade deal between um, Fiat World and Crypto Land. And so now capital can flow in much easier than it used to. I, I kind of think of this as a mental model as like China entering the WTO when everybody could invest in China. That's what this is. Now, these aren't permanent residents in crypto land. You know, this is more hot money flows, you know, tourism flows, hot money flows, you know, direct investment, foreign direct investment, that's VC flows. Um, and then we've got a bunch of residents there, people who have wallets and all of that. So I, I do think of it as, a, as an economy, and this just allows trade. Think about the biggest buyers of this stuff is actually the millennial cohort. What the millennials do really well is they um, they invest in their 401ks every month. And they can put this in their 401ks. So that's sticky. That's why ARK didn't get all the redemptions when it went down 75%. It's because it's millennials who own it and they put it in their 401k and they're in it for the long ride. So I think it's the, the boomer crowd who'll be more concerned about the volatility. I think, but that's, I think that's a very good thing. There's going to be a lot of people putting it as a long-term asset, buy and hold, and that should give it the stability that you need, that you don't just get massive washouts from people panicking the moment it goes down. And I think most of the ETF providers have made it pretty clear that it's a volatile asset and it's a buy and hold asset. Pal also thinks non-fungible tokens will go up in value. He thinks the next big market for stocks will be the NFT bull market, just like the one in 2021. But he warns that the next boom won't happen until overall economic conditions get better. In the conversation with Pomp, Powell compares NFTs to expensive watches, old cars, and other assets that depend on a person's extra cash flow. For many people, investing in these assets is only a choice when the economy is booming and the markets are at all-time highs. Powell also shows that there is a strong and clear link between big-picture events and crypto. 
According to the former Goldman Sachs executive, the Bitcoin having cycles, business cycles, and U.S. election cycles are all closely linked and reach their peaks in 2024 and 2025. Let's watch Pal's video again to hear more about his predictions for the crypto bull market, especially recent talks with institutional investors and the awakening of returning investors. I think we need to expect that, and particularly from passive flows of 401k investors putting it in every two weeks, every month. That'll keep a bid that didn't exist before. Um, so I think, yes, we'll probably see lower volatility, but we'll also be feeding capital into crypto land. And crypto land's not just the state of Bitcoin, it's a whole bunch of other places that are going to see capital flows. So the, the Wild West will still exist, but the big daddy becomes less volatile, which it, yes, it's a shame because we can't make as much money out of each cycle. But if our underlying philosophy is we want the adoption of this technology to be broad and deep, it has to go that way. So it's kind of good from that philosophical angle of trying to change the world, bad from the, the ridiculousness of the cycles and how profitable they can be if you get them right. I don't know is the answer for the same reason. Also, everybody's got PTSD because of last time, right? That second run up after the big correction, the second run up, everybody thought it was going to extend further and it didn't. And so everyone's got PTSD. So how I'm thinking about it, I'm giving a 60% probability this is a relatively normal cycle, in which case it would get to 150,000, let's say. I'm giving a 20% chance that it's actually a front-loaded cycle because of the ETF and other stuff that maybe it gets to that 150 faster and then fades, which will be kind of pain for a lot of people who expect it to go into 2025, right? And then the other 20% chance, I think, is that this ends up being a bubble cycle. And so it looks more like 2011, 12, 13 than it does the previous one. And in which case, if you remember that cycle, it had an interim top correction. Everyone thought it was over, and then it just exploded again. I think there's a decent chance of that. But we need to see the, the con contextualization of how the ETF flows impact you know, what's happening with monetary policy, what's going on in the economy, how the, how the election is going to play into this. So that's how I'm thinking of it. That upside crazy bubble target, you know, using that kind of everything code structure that, you know, I've talked about in the past, you know, we get price targets of half a million plus. So even if I discount me for being a moron by 50%, you still get 250 grand. So that's kind of the the, the 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 spread to me 150 250 um but obviously who who the hell knows and as you know the worst thing for any of us is everybody wants price targets and then a year and a half's time they hate you for it because you weren't exactly right think about the crowd that got um financialized in 2020 again mainly the millennial crowd right there's 110 million coinbase accounts and when i checked 6 months ago only 9 million were active so speaking to the guys at Coinbase, they're like, yeah, you know, in normal activity, it'll get to 35, 40 million and the top will grow as well. So there's a lot of money still to come in of people who participated last time around, have that interest, still have PTSD, will come back in. So maybe that offsets it. I don't know. Um, I also have a feeling the applications layer of, of blockchain is going to bring in a lot more use cases. So I'm thinking of this cycle as maybe the everything, everywhere, all at one cycle, when people have different unlocks for NFTs or inscriptions or different unlocks for um, smart contracts and some of the other things, and they can use it for everything from whether it's ticketing to real world assets. So it, it just depends how far that applications layer goes. If the applications layer doesn't make much progress this cycle, then you're dead right. You know, we'll see rebalancing. Don't forget, they're also going to be issuing um options on the etf and that changes the structure of markets as well we think 2024 will be a great year for bitcoin and all other coins this is because 2024 is the year that bitcoin has an event that has caused its price to go up a lot in the past for this cycle though raul pal says that the fact that the fed is stopping its quantitative tightening is the best news he says that a big boom in both the macro and crypto markets is about to start this summer, a famous macroeconomist and investor said that all roads lead to more trouble for the U.S. government next year. He said that the Federal Reserve will have to either cut rates in NQT or announce something similar to Japan's yield curve control.
This will mean more cash and huge price gains for the cryptocurrency industry, according to the founder of Real Vision. This is because the Federal Reserve is expected to pump more cash into the market. If you want to see more movies like this, please subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications.